Hello everybody, welcome back to Lyric Satiric, the podcast where we take songs throughout the uh, maelstrom of music throughout the years and we dissect the lyrics, uh, pull them apart, have a look through them, and then discuss the songs a little bit and find out what they're really about, what they uh, what they were meant to mean. Yeah. Is that a good... Is that a good... That's, that was is that a good. better explanation than previous ones? I don't know. You used the word, <laughs> the word maelstrom, which I appreciate. Um, it was good. No, that was good. Uh, you, last time you said it was a, a lyrical dissection, I think, was my favorite description that you used for this podcast. <laughs> yeah, maelstrom of music, I thought, was a That's good cool. alliteration. Yeah, yeah, I like it. <laughs> I like a good alliteration. It's fun. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what song? Well, it's already up on screen, but we can pretend yeah. like we don't know. Yeah, other people. Well, if if you're listening to this, you already know what it is. But we'll 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 tell you anyway. Um, so this is the 1973 track for a James Bond film, "Live and Let Die." Uh, the title of the song being "Live and Let Die," um, which was recorded by the uh, British and American uh, rock band Wings. Um, was well, performed by Wings, uh, but written by Paul and his wife Linda McCartney. Yes, indeed. Um, should we jump straight into the lyrics and then we'll talk a bit more about the song and the context yeah, sure. afterwards? Sounds good to me. Cool. Um, so with this song, uh, it, it starts off in uh, a, a sort of a, a sort of quite a soft, um, melodically sung, uh, gentle part to the song. Uh, it says, "When you were young." And your heart was an open book. You you used to say live and let live, but if, if in uh, but if this ever changing world in which we're living makes you give in and cry, say live and let die. Yeah, uh, which is a lovely bit of poetry. It is, uh, and uh, it's an unusual collection of lyrics. Yeah. So when you were young and your heart was an open book, um. It's sort of, yeah. You know, obviously, it's saying when you were young, it's giving you a throwback to mm. to when you were younger, and and your heart was an open book. So it makes me think of somebody who, Innocent. who, yeah, yeah, who hasn't ex, you know, hasn't experienced the world yet. Yeah, naivety say, and yeah, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Used to say live and let live, which is like it, it's a famous saying idiom, isn't it? Is. it? Um, but if this ever changing world in which we're living. Makes you give in and cry, uh, which is, gives that little sense of foreboding, mm. I think. Yeah. Um, but there's also, uh, should, should I get into the, uh, not controversy so much, but the disagreement that people have online about the lyrics? I, I'd love you to, because we were, we were setting up for the show and you told me this. And I had no idea. So it was fascinating. Yeah. So uh, some people say it's, but if this ever changing world in which we live in, Mm. makes you give in and cry which makes sense the world in which we live in it's not grammatically correct but songs don't have to be grammatically no. correct but some people say it's uh, but if in but if this ever changing world in which we're uh, as in we are uh, apostrophe yeah. re uh, living as in the world in mm. which we are living in kind of living makes you give in and cry say live and let die and it was. It's interesting because it came up in an interview with I Paul was McCartney. Say someone must have asked Paul McCartney by now. One hundred percent. They asked yeah. him, and he was like, "Oh, good point. I've never really thought about it." <laughs> of course not. Of course not. This is. And he's this like, is like, you know, this is the this is like the the Star Trek convention question. You know, when they ask William Shatner some really ridiculous thing, and he's just like, "I, I don't know." <laughs> never really considered it that much as much as you have like because people have seethed over this clearly but yeah yeah and paul mccartney was just like yeah i sp and, and literally in the interview he flip-flops between the two a little bit as as he's kind of like sounding it out in his head and he's just clearly never no like c considered which one would be correct and he's like going Meanwhile, oh yeah the internet's gone crazy <laughs> yeah yeah and he, he's like i could see how this would be ambiguous like yeah why you could do it in both ways it both kind of makes sense um and he sort of settles on saying yeah i think it's where we are living so we're living mm -hmm. in which we're living well, uh, google, with the ing on the end google agrees uh, with that 
cool yeah um <laughs> yeah that's interesting um it's it, i think it's more interesting because like like paul mccartney said both ways work they both make sense yeah um, yeah and, and the, the difference between the two is extremely nuanced yes like the, yeah. it, it, it doesn't I don't think it necessarily changes the meaning of the line or the song. No, the um, intent's there either way, I think. Yeah, and I did see comments online from people saying, oh, I, I swear on the recorded version he says it this way, but live for the past X amount of years he said it the other way. Sure. Uh, and which further lays creed to him not really caring or knowing which way yeah. round it is and... It doesn't really matter to him, and if it doesn't matter to him, I suppose it doesn't really matter to me either. But <laughs> well, it, it, it again, it's like the Star Trek thing, isn't it? Where it really yeah. does matter to those those fans that are you know obsessing over it. Um, which I I love that in fandom that that ability to to get really obsessed with something. Um, you know, um, and this is an incredible song, so I I can kind of see why people are super razor focused on it. You know, um. But yeah, like you said, this this opening is so so poetic, um, mm. and and really paints that that picture of innocence. Um, and then it's kind of, but the world's changing, you know, the world we're in is changing. Um, yeah, like you said, it, it's it's very poetic and innocent, and then it moves into that foreboding. Yeah, well, it just makes you give in and cry, and it's like. Mm. You know, the, it, it, to me, it, it it evokes sort of a heartbreak of, yeah. you know, well, as you grow older and you see, you see some of the things that happen in the world, whether it be, I mean, this is in the 70s, so we're, we're yeah. talking like war, famine, so on, so on, so forth. It, it, you know, it's like, it, it, it's the loss of hope. Mm -hmm. And that's when the music changes and you get the big rock chords and it says, say, live and let die. Yeah. Uh, which is a really nice, uh, real nice uh, pastiche on live and let live, live and let die. You know, it's a, a, a nice counterpoint to that. Um, and it repeats itself, live and let die. Yeah, live and let die, live and let die. Uh, and, and it's sort of, I, I don't know, it's sort of embracing the lack of hope mm. and being a bit fatalistic about it is the way I kind of look at it. You know, yeah. just being a bit kind of a... Um, a, a fuck it attitude as it were i think so um, yeah that's certainly what i would take from that uh but it, musically it's a real nice switch from this beautiful melody and and i think it's like a piano backing to it into this rock song uh and it goes into just an uh, an instrument instrumental break of real good rock music oh, yeah 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 it, it's and, epic and you've got the the um, orchestra in the background as well, giving these those really nice um, trills up into the high notes yeah. as well. Uh, and it, it's got lots of energy and excitement to it, but with no lyrics. It just mm -hmm. launches into this like blistering rock track instrumentally and goes for it. Yeah. And then suddenly it breaks. It's, yeah, suddenly and it kind of goes funky. Yeah, it's got mm. kind of a, a, a bit of a reggae vibe, uh, yeah. like beat to it. Uh, it goes kind of funky to it, and and suddenly the lyrics kind of change tone again. Mm. And it goes, "What does it matter to you when you've got a job to do? You got to do it well." And then, it, and it says, "What does it matter to you?" It's like, where has this come from? Yeah. Why is this so jovial? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And when you got a job to do, you got to do it well. And then it goes. You got to give the other fella hell, and and, Which and again goes into hat this big hell. What this song's about? <laughs> it, 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 it gives this big big rock chord, this big like hell moment. Mm. Um, and, and goes into the instrumental again, and, and then goes back into that melodic thing where they go back to you used to say live and let live, but in this ever changing world in which we're living. Makes you give in and cry, say live and let die, and then drops back into the blistering rock track as they repeat live and let die to finish. Uh, so, like, you, you've got, like, so many sections to this song. It's, it's, um, yeah, and, and like you said, very long instrumental moments in this song as well. Um, yeah. I also noticed you've got that, because um, on, on Google we've got it in the brackets, you have got the backing vocal saying, you know you did, you know you did, you know you did. Uh, it, the, oh uh, yes you used to say live and let live um and it's almost like 
they're telling you it's someone telling someone else they're like oh like you know you know you used to be like this but it makes me feel also a bit like they're kind of taunting yeah almost yeah it's like you know you used to say this you do you used yeah, it's, to. it's not the kind of you... thing you say comforting is it no no you know you did it's like all right <laughs> <laughs> But um, yeah, such a like an iconic um, rock track for a Bond film opening. It was the first rock song to open a Bond movie ever. Yeah, and 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 uh, you know, it's 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 funny because with Bond songs, it's it's always like you know, if generally if it's female sung, it's gold, and and a male song is like, oh, I don't know if this is going to work. This one hits out of the park um and it's it is quite different like some of the um you know every now and again with the bond songs you get those songs that really come out of left field and i feel like this one kind of did at the time it came out um yeah i i I would say to the caveat uh, of the uh female bond songs versus male bond Bond songs is um tom jones's thunderball mm -hmm. like that's a belter and he gives it everything (laughs) and it's such a fun song um but, I would but, say yeah. Living Daylights as well. I'm, I'm I'm partial to Living Daylights, but yes, but I think the Living Daylights I think is is I think that's after this. Oh, that's, it is. No, it uh, is after this because it's, uh, it's yeah yeah. Um, Duran Duran. Yeah, no, no, I was thinking of the actor. I could see the actor, but I can't. Uh, Timothy Dalton. Oh, Tim- Dalton. Timothy Dalton. Yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. it was after this. Um, but yeah, this one really did feel like oh, this is different, you know, for for a Bond, uh, for a Bond song. Um, and I feel like reading through the lyrics here, I I don't feel I I feel like if this song was written for the film, which it may well have been, I feel like it's one of those songs that's written for the film, but only in that it has the title of the film in the song. They've not really considered uh, much around the actual movie itself. Like they've taken the the uh, the title "Live and Let Die" and then they've just gone their own way with it. You know. So, it, it it was written for the film specifically. Mm-hmm. However, it was written before the screenplay was even finished. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, Paul McCartney was given the um, books, the James Bond books, and the book for Live and Let, Live and Let Die, mm-hmm. which was it was a it was called Live and Let Die, and it's more of a short story than a book. He 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 read it in a day. Right. He is a fast reader, but. You know, it didn't take him long to to, to finish it, uh, and it, but uh, already it had been established that a lot of the James Bond films with the titles of the books deviated from the books. Yeah, but there was no guarantee that the film would be anything to do with what was in the book, so he couldn't base the song too much of what is in the book because yeah. the film might be completely different. They hadn't finished the screenplay, so they couldn't tell him what the film was about. So it did kind of give him that unique problem of you've got to put the title in there and it's got to fit the film even though you don't know what it's about. So it is... It's vague enough that it could fit. Uh, yeah. It, it's, you know, uh, I guess you could argue like, oh, you know, well, no, no, because even, no, even before Bond's wife died, he didn't say live and let live. He was still an assassin. Like, I don't, <laughs> you know, he's a spy assassin. I, Yeah, I... I don't. I guess you could say, you know, at some point he was presumably innocent. It, it's vague enough that it could fit almost any any story, really. Um, yeah, I mean, you could argue James Bond when you were young. He could be talking about when he was like six years old child, or something. And yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> like you were young once and probably said "live and let live" when you were when you were less than ten. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now you've got double O status. Not so much. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's live and let die. You're fine. Because <laughs> uh, you have got that that the, the lyric that the line that really stands out is the um you've got to give the other fella hell. That's the like oh okay, this is you know, um this is obviously either competing against someone or uh or or fighting against someone you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, rather than it being because that that first opening. The first opening bit, you know, w- uh, when you were young and your heart was an open book, you used to say, live and let live. But in this ever w- ever-changing ever world in which we're living, makes you give in and cry, say, live and let die. That could just be like a, a, a mantra for growing up in life, right? 
yeah generally. yeah very true but, yeah. but when you start saying give the other fella hell then it feels like oh there, there's a point to this this is not yeah, like a general a more... advice this is a specific we've got like maybe six lines at the end here which is actually the the point behind the song yeah but it's also it's weird because it's like it, what does it matter to you which kind of dismisses everything that's come before it <laughs> yeah, in the song yeah yeah and it's to this like chilled out reggae beat of what does it matter to you it's like what okay so the rest of the song is irrelevant when you got a job to do you gotta do it well it's like well well yeah you've got to give the other fella hell okay what are we singing about here like that it's it's kind of a curveball and a bit out of left field not only in terms of the lyrics but in terms of the style of music that has suddenly been thrust upon us before we go right right back into the blistering rock track i've just had a thought now now reading this do you do you like this could almost work as someone in their own mind taunting themselves and it's a bit bipolar with their feelings a little bit a little bit you know because like you said it's like well what does it matter to you you know like like you know if you're if you're going through a breakup or something and you're really upset and you're like well does it really matter i guess it doesn't matter and just try and like convince yourself that it doesn't matter um and and then you get to that that bottom line where it's like you gotta give the other uh fella hell you know it almost becomes aggressive again you're angry and you you know you remember that actually i am angry yeah. about this i am yeah. you know determined or, or whatever um i don't know i, I, I wonder if also with the you know you did you know you did that kind of taunting nature of it mm. but, but what does it matter to you could also be classed in that way what does it matter to you oh sure you know, yeah yeah it could just be that, like, that it's, taunting it's, yeah sort of like being uh, either somebody be, the 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 singer being antagonistic or somebody being self-antagonistic yeah. in order to try and shake off the nostalgia of when i was young you know stuff got to me i had mm. feelings but i've got to shake that off and get on with life and you know <laughs> be combative and deal with the horrible things that i've got to deal with kind of mm. thing so is it is it about like sort of uh summoning an inner strength or a lack of emotion to get on with it yeah maybe it could go either way um I there was a review in the uh, magazine NME by Ian McDonald. Of the song? Uh, of the song, yeah. Right. Uh, and it said, McCartney's fairly reasonable solution to the given problem, write in less than 25 bars a theme tune for the new James Bond movie. Uh, his solution is to let it be for the first half, <laughs> wait, <laughs> wailing did, absently <laughs> with a curious notion of grammar about this ever-changing world in which we live in, before sitting back to let a three thousand piece orchestra doing the do a do a man in the streets impression of John Barry, it's not intrinsically very interesting, but the film to ha will help to sell it and vice versa, which is a bit of a, That's pretty harsh. a cutting review. Yeah, I love this song. Um, yeah, that sounds really harsh. Um, wow. Okay, but I I I do think there's something to the fact that. McCartney was given a, a given a brief of write a song to a film that you, <laughs> that you haven't song. seen or read yet. Based on nothing, yeah. Um, and there, there, there's a, like an account of um, one of the other people in Wings, uh, I can't remember which band member it was, but they said that he got the brief whilst they were on tour and he was, he was sat down, Paul McCartney apparently sat down in front of a piano after reading the book, the short story. Hmm. And uh, just started plinking away, going, bah, bah, James Bond, and sort <laughs> of like, in a jokey kind of way. And apparently it just sort of came together, the right. concept of the song, like, in an afternoon. And he said how fascinating it was to watch him go from, this is a ridiculous con con concept, and essentially and, taking and the a ridiculous a ask, bit. really. Yeah, and suddenly turning it into a song... And Paul McCartney was saying, you know, the, the title of the story was Live and Let Die. Mm. And he was like, oh, well, that's a pastiche or a counterpoint to Live and Let Live. So that's got to be my counterpoint, which is why he put that in the in the nice. yeah. first section, which which is, a, you know, it's pretty logical. A, a sm yeah, it's a very logical way of doing it. Um, but it seems like there's, there's not actually <laughs> in reality, there's not actually much that much deeper thought that's been put into it. Yeah, it is 
just just him going oh well i've got a brief i've got i've got a right to it and 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 this is what works in yeah. a vague way for the song i, I kind of um, felt like he didn't have a choice because yeah. without any idea of what the film or the plot of the film is going to end up being um what can you do except kind of go with like something a bit more vague or a bit more less literal you know yeah because you listen to uh, some th- bond songs and they're very much about the film 100 percent. Um, yeah uh, and and obviously those people were presumably briefed <laughs> you know like you know my name for casino royale you, you read yes. that and you're like oh this is and i actually think that's one of a very good oh keep thinking of, of songs that are sung by males now for bond that i like um but, <laughs> but again that one the lyrics to that are very much bond it's very much like you know he's cutting his teeth and it's it's all about that you know uh, yeah. in the song in the content of the song um, well i i adore chris cornell oh, as too. well so he and his voice was oh, so one good. of a kind um, so, so but lyrically that, as well you know that's a uh, lyrically it works amazingly well um and and here yeah i i feel like he was giving given an impossible task and he you know it, it may not be uh a a good song fit for the film necessarily in terms of lyrical content obviously musically Maybe. it works but it is a fantastic song so fantastic in fact that it um was number one in the u.s charts mm-hmm and it was won and was nominated for numerous awards yeah. of the time in in both film circles and in music circles like it was yeah. a very very beloved song and it was one of i think two covers uh that guns and roses did uh yeah um, i mean they did a couple of covers but the, like it was the the main big one wasn't it it was their their big cover one of their two big yeah and uh, uh, apparently like they put a lot of effort into that cover um one well, of the guys sounds does... like it too um you can Ooh. tell that cover is done with absolute love for the original song uh, apparently they were just saying oh what covers could we do and one of them mentioned live and let die and apparently axel just went nuts and went yes 100 percent, i'm in let's do that and they, they just started working on it that day amazing and apparently you know they said that whatever you have to say about axel rose and uh, how difficult a person he was apparently he spent hours and hours like dialing in the synths oh, cool. um to get them just right mm. for their cover of live and let die he like really put in the work hours in order to get the synths like um you know he was doing like the synth bending stuff in, in order to get the the trills right and the, the 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 rises and falls right on it and really spent a lot of time getting it just just the way he wanted it to and 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 that it was something that they they noted as quite an impressive thing for him to to put through that much effort on it as well yeah um so yeah quite an interesting how about how much it's like inspired people and like um uh sort of remained as one of the mo- more well-known bond tracks yeah. despite it being very different to a lot of other bond tracks yeah 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 i i think in in, in many ways it probably stands out more because of that you know um it, it mm. works really well because it is that different um from from the the previous one certainly um and i guess it kind of set the stage for the for the more kind of you know varied bond songs uh, that came after it kind of set that trend yeah it definitely took it away from the crooner kind of yeah. you know ballady kind of track and left it open to something a little bit more modern and a little bit more different yeah, and, and obviously does, it's almost that like this isn't your dad's bond this is you know what i mean it's got that kind of attitude yeah, to it where yeah. it's like oh no we're bringing this up to date now and this is you know this is modern bond um, yeah, and, yeah, and it meant that we did get things like Duran Duran and and yeah. and onwards from there into more pop and rock and that kind of stuff, which, which kind of varied um, theme tunes for 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 Bond movies from from there going forwards, really. Yeah. And every now and again, they still pop back to the old uh, belters and ba- and yeah. and ballads yeah, and yeah, stuff, and and that was great, but. Uh, it was nice. I mean, you could argue that it's entirely possible that without live and let die we wouldn't have had the chris cornell you know my name quite possibly uh, james not. bond track yeah. so yeah uh, uh there is also a, a, an interview where um 
Paul McCartney did say that um, I think it was something along the lines of uh, he didn't, you know, obviously he had to write in the title of Live and Let Die and he was he lamented that uh, he feels sorry for anyone who got uh, Quantum of Solace. <laughs> so that, yeah, that's how do you work that into a song? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess in terms but of, of course, you know, yeah. in terms of having a vague title, uh, yeah. Live and Let Die isn't a bad one to get. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. But in, in later films, obviously, they, they dropped the need for the film title in the song, uh, yes. which made, made that more possible. <laughs> Probably makes it a little bit easier, yeah. Well, that was great. I, I really enjoyed going through that song. That was cool. It's it's just such a, a fun one. It's such an interesting song musically because of the genre hopping that it does uh, and obviously the association it has with uh, popular film. So, yeah, I awesome. thought it was a real, real fun one to kind of touch on and, and go through. Yeah, cool. Well, we will be back uh, next time with another song. But until then, uh, stay safe, take care, and we'll catch you next time. See you, everybody.